Hello, everybody, and a warm welcome here to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Delighted to have you on board. What are we about? Well, we are a wine educational channel specifically designed to help those of you studying things like the WSET, and this is one of those videos. And it's on the wonderful state of Oregon in the Pacific Northwest, and we are here on series four. Let's just go back to that picture first. So what a gorgeous picture of the Columbia River. Very beautiful landscape here. So we are on series four, looking at North and Eastern Oregon. And we are only two parts here. So this first part, which is on all the Columbias, this is available as free content. Then the Walla Walla and Snake River is only available on my e-learning portal. You see it at the bottom. It's winewithjibby.com. Okay, so let's talk about uh, where we're looking at. So if you have been following this series so far, you would have been with me throughout the um, introduction to the Oregon and then going through the Willama AVAs, then eventually the Southern Oregon AVAs. Now we're talking about up here, the kind of Northern Oregon AVAs and Eastern area, bordering Washington State and in fact sharing with Washington State and Idaho, the same with this area too. So we're basically looking at a collection here of uh, five AVAs uh, on the Washington border and Idaho. So that's this area you see up here. We're going to discuss a fair bit here about multi-state appellations that exist here, of course, spanning Oregon and Washington and Oregon and Idaho. Uh, so we'll go through Columbia Gorge, Columbia Valley first, then we'll look at Walla Walla and the nested ABA there. And then we'll, we'll add on a little bit here on Snake River Valley as well. It's a very small proportion. This is why this is the last series. We're looking at a very small proportion of Oregon wine here. The largest would be uh, Columbia Gorge ABA, which is number 18, and also Walla Walla, which is up here. So they're the two major ones. So here in this little video, we're going to talk more about Columbia Gorge and in the next one, much more specifically about Walla Walla. OK, so first of all, it's important to begin with Columbia Valley AVA, which is exceptionally huge. Uh, this was established in 1984. And as you can see, that's the dividing line, this dotted line between Oregon and Washington state. And this whole outlined area with a lovely hue around it or shade around it, this white shade, is what we call the Columbia Valley AVA. Over three and a half thousand hectares under vine here with predominant varietals such as Riesling. Of course, the biggest single producer of Riesling in the world is here with Chateau Saint Michel. Uh, so important Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Syrah, Sauvignon Blanc, amongst many others. It's a fairly large area. Uh, but there's not a huge amount on the Oregon side. It's much more focused on its Washington state side more than anything. But we're going to go to the far western side of the Columbia Valley, where there's an additional AVA, not in it, but next to it. And that's this area we around Hood River that we call the Columbia Gorge AVA. So this is... Uh, it's a difficult one because we know we're in the north of Oregon, but we are towards the most western point here of, um, of our areas we're looking at. And we're actually getting fairly close to Portland. Uh, so we're about 60 miles east of Portland when we talk about Hood River. Uh, now, the Columbia Gorge, of course, makes you think of quite dramatic topography. And that's exactly what it is here. It really is the heart of the dramatic river corridor that straddles the Columbia River. And that's along the border here of Oregon and Washington. So you'll see that you've got this, I don't know, kind of N shape here, which is partly in Oregon and partly in Washington. Two thirds actually here lies within Oregon. The AVA was established in 2004. But it is only a planted area of 375 hectares. So it's actually a fairly small drop in the Vineous Ocean of Oregon. 
Uh, many different varieties thrive here due to the variety of geography, topography, uh, and geology. The predominant soils are volcanic, loess, silt, and sand in this area. And just to give you an idea of what it's like as a climate, we often would consider the uh, Columbia Gorge AVA as a transitional climate, meaning that from one part of the area, it's one type of climate, and to another part, it is a different climate because it straddles climatic different zones. So the western end, where we're going here more into the yellows, eventually into blues of Columbia Gorge, uh, which is closer to the Cascade Mountains, has a cooler marine influence climate where it rains around 36 inches per year. Now, if we stretch 40 miles to the east, you can see the colors here change into more of an orange and a darker orange. And we get into a more continental high desert climate with just 10 inches. So about less than a third of the rainfall here on its eastern side compared to its western side. So big, big differences there in only 40 miles. Uh, so also here throughout the gorge, elevations of vineyard sites vary from around sea level up to something like uh, about 500 meters, which greatly impacts temperatures at, during the growing season. The Columbia River Gorge is the only sea level passage throughout the Cascade mountain range and it funnels persistent winds at an average speed of around 10 to 20 miles per hour. And that acts as a cooling and drying force to the vineyards. Uh, so you're going to get, of course, we know it's wet, certainly on its western side. But with these winds, of course, you get a good amount of airflow, which does restrict and reduce the amount of fungal disease uh, in the area. So we've got a wide range of grape varieties grown, uh, grown here. And wines from the Columbia Gorge tend to be riper than Oregon's cooler western regions with higher acidity and structure than what occurs naturally in the warmer ABA. So it's somewhere in between. OK, so that actually brings me to the conclusion of Columbia Valley as an encompassing area, mainly in Washington state, and then Columbia Gorge sitting at the western end of Columbia Valley that we just went through uh, being a little bit different and mainly in Oregon. Please join me for part two, only two subscribers of Wine with Jimmy. And that's looking at Walla Walla Valley, very important in terms of volume and quality and Snake River Valley, mainly in Idaho, but a little bit found in Oregon. And of course, if you do have any comments, questions or concerns, please drop an email to winewithjimmy.com. That's info at winewithjimmy.com. And if you do find yourself in the United Kingdom, it'd be great to see you potentially for a class, a glass or a bottle. Until then, ciao for now. Goodbye.